but she is ring rigged. Um, basically, what it's rigged with bones rather than with the biped rig this way. Um, I'm just going to freeze the model so I can select the bones without accidentally clicking on the model. And you select these the joint areas so where the bone actually starts off its limb. So I've selected up here, but I'll rotate this full arm. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. You see. Same again, if we select this one, I'll rotate the forearm. The leg one here, if I do it in this window. And that's how that's set up, basically. We've got the head done. I've managed to rig in the two ponytails. I thought as that, that one's more on a strut, I'd just leave it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so she's ready to go. So how would you um, how do you if if you're going to animate this from there? I mean, I'm assuming that there's some way of sort of like taking a shot as a frame. Yes. This so timeline. if you were to move it, can you just like run me through that? I can. This basically, I had a, I had a quick go myself. Not brilliant because I'm not an animator, but if we press play. Okay, yeah. Now what I've done there, I'm going to reset this file by selecting all of the bones. All these little nodes we've got in here are individual keyframes that have been placed for specific bones. Right. So what I'll do is I'll select all of them and remove them. So now if I press play, she won't do anything. Take to animate. So we'll get on the first frame. Down here, We've got auto key. Yeah. Always have that selected. That means as soon as you move a bone, it bangs in a keyframe flop for you. Right. At the point where your yellow marker is down here. Right. Okay. If you've actually pressed the key, you can do it manually. All oh, right. That might be better for me. Because um, obviously, when I was doing stop motion, you'd move all the separate parts of the model that you were animating. And and then you would press the button to record the frame. Right. Would that work that way? Yeah, you can. You just leave that off, and you just um, if we quickly do one of this leg, I'm going to set a keyframe in there. So it, say it's slide, start position. Yeah. So just maybe like lift her foot up a little bit, and then move one of her arms as well at the same time. So I've done it there. I've. I didn't see what you did there. The first again. frame. Got this. Is, point her over on, on the first frame here. Yeah, yeah. And down here, I press the key button. Okay. Okay, and it's that's how it's recorded the first frame. Yeah. So if we move over one frame. Yeah. I can then rotate slightly. Yeah. Press the key again. Yeah. Move over another frame. Rotate slightly. Press the key again. But also, the good thing with this is we can go back to that f second frame. I can select the next button down. Yeah. And reverse and add a keyframe for that bone separately because this is it's a keyframe per bone yeah, okay. rather than the overall, overall but frame. am I able to sort of like move two or three different bones and then press a key? You are but you'd have to have all of the bones selected at the same time to press the key in. So you can move them individually Yeah. if I just move through that yeah. What we need to do is... This is 3D Max Animation 101 for the Heart of Thinking, yeah? <laughs> yes. Something along those lines. What we do is... I'm going to auto key it because I prefer it that way myself. Okay. I'm going to add that first keyframe in manually. And we've got five frames. Actually, I want to do with that button there. I've got five frames. Oh, wrong button. That one there. Bring the leg up. So it's automatically put that frame in there so it saves me pressing the key. Yeah. And then if I select this one as well, I can do that. And that's automatically put that frame in. So. She's done that. 